Hi guys, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you getting to this video, which means you probably watched my last video. And if you haven't, I really recommend going back and taking a look at it because I have some PDF downloads that'll be helpful in understanding these next steps that we're gonna take. So the last video, we talked about finding a roadmap or a blueprint or a foundation, whichever word you want to use. So basically a way to see your emotion and actually name it and identify it through tracking your vulnerability factors, your the event that happens and occurs that causes the emotion, the way your body feels, the way that you express your body feelings, and then ultimately finding the name of that emotion so that you can start having skills that you can toss into little categories with each of those feelings as ways to get you out of feeling these unwanted and negative emotions. So like I mentioned in the last video, we all want and desire amazing things for ourselves, most likely. And sometimes if we don't desire more for ourselves, it's because we have mental health issues or emotions that are getting in the way of that. So we have where we are, we have where we want to be, and all the stuff in the middle. So how do we handle those negative emotions? So I just wanted to mention one thing. I'm not an expert. I am not as a professional. I'm not a therapist. I'm not any of those things. But I am an expert by experience. And I'm pretty sure, or I really think that we're a lot alike. I mean, I always believed in myself. I always, underneath all of the stuff, I thought I could have exactly what I wanted in my life. But my emotions and my fear, it would just derail me and throw me off. And it would make it impossible for me to get to where I wanted to be in a sustainable way. Because sometimes when I was feeling really good, I'd be going at it and I would get so much done. But then when I would feel intense emotion, not know how to name it, not know how to handle it, and ultimately not know how to reduce it to where I could focus again and be present, all of the things that I'd accomplished would just crumble and fall apart. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know how to feel better. So I think if you're watching this video, we probably have that in common. So let's get started on the next skill. So the next thing I want to talk about is something from DBT by Marshall Linehan. There's a PDF for this on how to go through the timeline and what you can do at each step in this timeline to potentially reduce the unwanted emotions or get rid of them entirely. So let's start with the vulnerability factors. The halt that I mentioned, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you're any of those things at any given moment, address them. If you are hungry, eat something. If you are angry, distract yourself with something. Perhaps dancing makes you really happy, do that. Perhaps watching a hilarious TV show like Friends or The Office makes you laugh, obviously, hopefully. Go watch that. Address these things before you get into any situations, before you approach life, because by addressing those first, you are way less likely to react with an intense emotion when something does happen. If you're lonely, call a friend just to say hello, or go out to a cafe and get some work done. Sometimes just being around people helps. And if you're tired, take a nap. And don't feel ashamed for it. If you have the time, take the nap, because if you feel like you don't have the time, and you're super tired, chances are whatever you decide to do or whatever you need to do, you will not do well because you are exhausted. So you'll be more productive when you wake up from that nap than you will be if you just push on through. The prompting event, something that triggered you. You cannot control that most likely. Something happens, for instance, a fight with your mother, like I mentioned in the last video. Maybe she started it. So it triggers you. You couldn't control that. You can't control her behavior. You cannot control things outside of yourself. So now you have this emotion because you were triggered. So what do you do here? The stop skill. S, stop. Do not react, stop. The T, take a step back and breathe. O, observe. Observe objectively what is happening in this situation. Mom is screaming at me because she said that I did not take out the trash or whatever the case is. Observe it. That is what is happening. And P, proceed mindfully. So you know that this is what's happening. So how do you respond to that? Your thoughts and beliefs are next. What are you thinking? 
around this situation. Mom doesn't love me. She doesn't respect me. She has no idea what's going on in my life. I am so stressed. I forgot to take out the trash. What are your thoughts and beliefs behind that? And how do you change those? Ask, does this emotion or the intensity of the emotion fit this situation? So you can definitely be angry if your mom is coming at you like that. But how intense is it? Are you angry enough where you're gonna explode and start throwing things? That's probably not effective for that situation. Or are you angry enough where you need to take a step back and go into your room? That's probably appropriate for that situation. So in this moment, you just need to ask yourself, does this emotion fit this particular situation? If it's a yes, go ahead and respond appropriately. Yes, I'm angry and validly so. Mom, I am angry because I am stressed and I forgot to take out the trash. I will do it next time. If it is not effective and if it is not the appropriate level of intensity for the situation, it's probably good to take a step away. So the biological. So this is a good, good moment if your emotion does not fit the situation, if the intensity of it does not fit. Your biological, what's going on in your body, the way that you're responding, the way that your expressions are coming out. The tip skill, so tip your body chemistry. Sometimes you just need something to shock you and smack you in the face to get you out of it. A skill that I use all the time, that I love, that I tell everyone about is if I was feeling especially angry or if I was feeling especially panicked and afraid, I would put a cold compress right here on my eyes. It is one of my grounding techniques. I do not need it as much anymore, but when I first started this work, I needed it constantly. So holding onto an ice cube, perfect way to tip your body chemistry. Head into a sauna, jump into a cold plunge, put ice on your face. All of those things will snap you back to the present moment. And so the last thing that I did not mention in the last video is your action urge. Every emotion that you have comes with an action urge. Anger could be to throw something. Fear could be to cry, if it, and if it ends up in panic, it could be to find a way to make things better. So for me, a lot of the time, it was panic over someone wanting to leave me, so I would call them 10 million times. That is an action urge that I did not want to do anymore. So what do you do in that moment? So you use the skill from earlier, you stop, you take a step back and you ask yourself, will this action be effective? So for instance, fear. Let's talk about fear. If you walk into the forest and there's a bear and you're afraid and you have the urge to run, I honestly don't know, do not quote me on this. I don't know if this is the correct way to respond to a bear, but that might be an appropriate action because there's clear danger there. But if there's fear associated with a thought, a belief that someone is going to leave you because they didn't respond back to you in 30 minutes, that is probably not the effective course of action. So running or calling them 10 million times, that is not effective. That is not gonna help anything. It's not gonna help reduce your emotion. It might momentarily, but ultimately it's gonna come back. So what could you do instead? Instead, you could take a hot bath. Instead, you can rationalize. Just because he's not getting back to me in 30 minutes does not mean that he does not love me and does not mean that he does not wanna be with me. And that takes a crazy amount of practice. It took me a long time to be able to rationalize with myself, but using all these skills over and over will allow you to do that. So these are usable skills that you can use now. You saw them in the slides. I have PDF downloads of the specific skills, the stop, the halt, all of those skills are there. All right, so now you have the skills. Now you have specific things. There's a little more in the PDF too. So go ahead and download those. I couldn't fit them into the video. I didn't want this to be too crazy long because nobody would watch it. Or maybe you would, I don't know. See, that's a little fear for myself. I gotta get over that. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the real how. How do you implement this into your life? I mentioned stuff briefly about journaling and all of that, but how do you really do this day to day? 
How do you take ownership of it? How are you able to implement it into your life in a sustainable way and actually deal with your emotions? Now, I can't get into everything in these videos because they are short, but I hope that some of this is helpful. So do you feel like you understand a little bit better certain ways to stop you on that timeline? I hope so. I hope the stop skill can be of help. I also hope tipping the body chemistry can be a really helpful one because sometimes the body sensations get in the way the most because you actually feel them physically and that can be really disorienting. So do you feel like you have some skills? Do you feel like you have a roadmap that you can actually use? Whether you do or not, I would love it if you commented below because all of your feedback will help me bring you content that's way more helpful to you. And if something is confusing to you, let me know and I'll improve that for the next video. Thank you so much. I will see you next time.